Hi guys, Neil Parrish, the former Tory MP who resigned in disgrace for watching dodgy stuff on his phone when he should have been working, appeared on GB News from his home to complain about people working from home. Now this was part of a bigger narrative about societal collapse, where more and more people are relying on food banks to survive, where the NHS is on its knees and where public infrastructure is literally collapsing. Conservatives will blame others before blaming themselves, of course. Have a listen. I think, you know, I go back really right back to COVID, to be honest with you. And I think we've never really picked up since. I think we had an attitude where, you know, naturally, perhaps psychologically, you know, the main thing is to survive uh, and the main thing is, is to live. Uh, and so a lot of people have decided to take things quite a lot easier. And I think that's what's the snowboard. I mean, I run a farm, a farming business. It's quite difficult to get people to do things um, you know, on time. Um, building work is almost impossible. And so then mm -hmm. you go back to the back the schools, you know, have not been repaired. Now that is incompetence. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Either either from the local authorities or, or from the government We've, or from a combination. This country of stopped working, Neil. Neil, this country has stopped working. The most basic of things now appear to be beyond the wit of man to be able to do. Not just a barge to house a load of illegal migrants on or a base that yesterday one bit of it blew up, for goodness sake. But also the other stuff like you've just said there, you know, about general building works. You know, things that need to be done in terms of basic infrastructure, a smart motorway, the cameras that we use on the smart motorway steam up so you have to point them at the sun so they're not looking at the traffic and people crash and die. I mean, it is laughable. I get why, you, why you're laughing and I'm yeah. not digging you out for yeah. it, but, you know, there is a serious yeah. undertone here. But, but this is the thing. Is. And people, people are, are lobbing tax money at uh, this country, left, right and centre, paying arguably higher than they've ever paid in terms of tax. And they're getting naff all for it. We'll, come on, how do we fix this? Is it, is it attitude? Is it work? Work ethic. What is it? It is a bit. It's, it's partly worth ethic, not from everybody, but from mm. some. I think there's still actually too many people working from home because some people work well from home, other people don't. And I think there's a lot of issues of really actually getting the economy really going. I think the health service. Are... I don't understand this argument. People working from home. What is the problem with people working from home? Now he sort of hinted at it at the beginning of this interview, where he said, "Well, you know, during the pandemic, people." took a step back and they viewed work and life in a different way. <laughs> okay, um, shouldn't it be the case that we don't just drop dead from work? That work should provide people with the means to have a decent life. It shouldn't be a case of living to work, but working to live. You know, this idea that you just throw your throw yourself into the work and uh, and ignore everything else. This isn't for this isn't good for a society. Of course, not everyone has the luxury of working from home, uh, but I think if people do have that choice, they should be given it. They should be um, uh, given the chat the chance to spend more time with their families, spend more time on their hobbies. Just disconnecting from the office can be a huge benefit to people. Now, some people prefer to be in the office. Sometimes it's necessary to be in the office. Um, smart working used to be the exception. Now I think it's becoming the norm. But I really don't understand why this is a problem for so many Conservative MPs and ex-MPs. A lot of that down is we've never really tackled the administration properly in the health service, so we over-administer it and under-deliver. There's no... <sighs> the problem is not so much admin. There is a problem of, of administration, of course, that can be reformed. But the bigger problem, of course, is privatization, where you have private companies taking advantage of the NHS. Private companies you know, making huge amounts of money. We saw it recently when it came to nursing. Uh, the NHS can't get, can't get the workers they need because of Brexit, because of freedom of movement, because of underfunding, uh, because of Tory policies. So they have to rely on the private sector, which is much more expensive. The, they have to hire in agency staff. The agencies make lots of money. The staff don't. So the NHS is paying a huge premium for staff, but the actual workers who are doing the work are not seeing the benefits. While if they could employ them directly, of course, those, those staff would be on higher wages and better working conditions. But then somebody wouldn't be able to make a profit. <laughs> That's the problem. So you need to look at privatization within the NHS, get rid of that, and you'll actually be able to bring down the cost. But 
When it comes to cost, the Tories are probably not the best people to be talking. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.